in order to do that, just like air going around an airplane wing, it well, must it's an eddy right here. Yes, and it must accelerate, which means it's going to scour the dirt on this side. It's going to pick it up. As it joins back together on the far side, it's going to slow down and it's going to drop the dirt. Well stated. So it's, it's a powerful evidence of a flow. Also, up in here, it's very hard to show there, so I enlarged it so you could see. Some of those layers are also cross bedded, which is also once again formed by a flow of water yes. transporting the sedimentary deposits. And you and Professor Clark have run experiments regarding that. Yes. Now, what do you have here? Okay, we uh, went up and actually molded the original tree with permission, and this is probably the only time we'll ever get to do this. In fact, the original plan was to mold the whole cliff, but when I got there, it was so unstable, uh, I didn't want to win the Darwin Award <laughs> and pull the whole cliff down on myself. And we're not so, in the process of destroying, we're in the process of preserving. Uh, preserving, and unfortunately, I don't think that tree is going to be there much longer. A couple of winters, and I suspect that whole cliff is going to come down and the tree, the fossil tree with it. Yes. So I'm very grateful we molded it when we did, because we may never got that chance again. And uh, Neil brought me up there as well, and that is the reconstruction of it, complete with the sedimentary layers accurately depicted. This layer, as already shown. Curved with the cross bedding and the coal seam down below. Now, that whole area I investigated, there was about 10 plants, not quite that big. Most of them were smaller. A forest. Uh, yes, and the, uh, but there was no roots. Now, at Joggins, Nova Scotia, where you can literally see 50 of these at any given time, a lot of those still have roots intact, sometimes with the rootlets stripped off. But in this case, I mean, I looked. I went, I checked in the tailings, I checked in the plants. There was not a single root to be found anywhere. These plants were clearly uprooted and transported. Now, interestingly, this is Neil here. Neil is the one who sort of helped us out here. Yes, and and with, with full permission of mm -hmm. uh, the agency. Mm -hmm. And he and I managed to, oh boy, was that ever a job. <laughs> uh, it was a job molding that thing, having to transport hundreds of pounds of equipment over a mile of rough terrain. Then this was about 150 pounds, and we had to hand carry that out. The reason that we are interested in that, that was from the tailings of the mine. So again, this is stuff that's getting destroyed, sure. literally by weather, yes. uh, time, the winter especially yes. is the worst on it. But our interest there is at Joggins, what you will often find in the bottom of the stumps is lizard skeletons. And so, uh, once again, the, the evolutionary belief is that these lizards came along and fell into the stumps as the sedimentary layers were slowly accumulating around the, the stumps. But that doesn't, they tend to ignore all the other evidence like missing roots, missing branches, yes. fractured yes. trees, etc. And, and actually, primates. since these are hollow reeds mm -hmm. uh, and any fissure that might form on the side mm -hmm. in this disturbance flow would offer an opportunity for creatures such as lizards also involved in that flow but still alive to just find refuge and when they did they dropped to the bottom. We're going to have this spiral CAT scan mm -hmm. to see if there are lizards and the plan is to do that very, very soon, if there are any skeletons mm -hmm. left there. All oh, right, in these closing moments, you have made a dramatic statement that has collapsed time. Let's mm -hmm. take one minute and talk about these dinosaur eggs. We'll have to do it very briefly. Okay. And in fact, this is what the oviraptors would like to do. This is an oviraptor egg nest. Very interesting how it uh, yes. gets its name. But that's a textbook example of what they would like to do. Apparently a double orifice for laying two eggs at a time, mm -hmm. rather yeah. than just skipping over a bit. And apparently it stood in the middle, laid two eggs, rotated, laid another two yes. eggs. Of course, the, the anti-creationists try and use this as evidence against Noah's flood. It's actually good evidence for Noah's yes. flood. Because for, of this. Yes, for example, this is a classic example. This is a hadrosaur egg nest. And I'm glad you defined what a polystrate fossil was because these fossils up here, these fossil eggs, are actually polystrate fossil yes. eggs. And explain how we know that to be okay. the case. The reason they, we know that is because of the way the nest was discovered. A layer of rock and exposed the cross section of several of these eggs. So it's actually cutting through multiple layers of rock. Now in this case, apparently the mud was rising around the ankles of the dinosaur as it laid its eggs, as each egg is higher than the last. Yes, and the mud is actually flowing in. So we're collapsing time. So those layers are often interpreted to be from 
26,000 to 100,000, each, each little layer, 26,000 <laughs> to 100,000 years apart, often geologically interpreted. But here we have a matter of minutes in the laying of the nest of eggs with the water coming in and the layers forming. We've <laughs> actually collapsed time. Yep. Let's end where we began. We started with the explanation that among these fossils that have been misrepresented as being in our lineage, time has been collapsed to show that simultaneous with their existence, we have evidence of humankind, reflective humankind, large brain, totally man, living simultaneously with these creatures in the same general vicinity. Man has always been man. Man was created originally on day number six in the image of Almighty God. Since that is the case, man has a moral responsibility. I'd like to lead you in a simple prayer right now. Now that time has been collapsed to one biblical time frame, wouldn't you do the right biblical thing and pray to the God of creation? Pray this simple prayer. Dear God, as a reflective creature, I know I'm a sinner. I need Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, right now, I open my heart's door to you. Right now, I ask you to step into my heart and live. Save me. Cover my sins with your blood. And I will serve you with all my heart for all eternity. Creation in the 21st Century has been sponsored by Trinity Broadcasting Network. And only with your love gift of support can this program stay on the air. So write to Creation in the 21st Century, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Creation in the 21st Century is a unique program on TBN combining biblical knowledge with scientific verification. Much of the information that I use on the program is available. Contact us. Just write Creation Evidence Museum, P.O. Box 309, Glen Rose, Texas, 76043, or call us at 254-897-3200. We look forward to hearing from you today.